Have you been told you've got dense breasts but you don't know what it means? Does having dense breasts really mean you're more likely to get breast cancer? How do you know if you've got dense breasts? Why is suddenly everybody making a fuss about it? Is there anything you can do to make them less dense? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about dense breasts and breast cancer risk, including the impact of alcohol and HRT. If you've not watched one of my videos before, hi, I'm Dr. Liz O'Riordan. I'm a breast surgeon who's had breast cancer, so I know what I'm talking about. If you want to find out more about me, check out the notes below. I do the research so you don't have to. The dense breasts have hit the headlines in recent years because we now have evidence to prove that women with dense breasts are more likely to get breast cancer, which sounds pretty damn scary. Now, you might think that having dense breasts means you will definitely get breast cancer, but trust me, that's not what it means. Dense breasts do not mean that you will get breast cancer. It just increases your risk by a small amount. And I'll tell you just how small that increase is in a bit. There are also things you can do to lower your risk. But before we get to that, what is a dense breast? Well, before I can tell you that, you need to know that your breasts are made up of three different parts. The first is glandular tissue. This is the active part of the breast. It's the lobules where the milk is made after you have a baby and the ducts that carry milk to your nipples if you breastfeed. The second part is a fibrous tissue and that holds the glandular tissue in place, a bit like scaffolding. The third is the fatty tissue, which fills in all the gaps. If your breasts are dense, it simply means you have more glandular and contective tissue and less fatty tissue. It's got nothing to do with how big your breasts are or how firm they feel. Are dense breasts normal? Yes, they are. In your teens, 20s and 30s, your breasts are naturally dense, meaning they have more glandular tissue because they think you might get pregnant in the future. But as you reach your 40s and older, your periods stop, your estrogen levels drop and your breasts become less active. Some of your glandular tissue gets converted to fat and your breasts naturally become less dense over time. However, nearly half of all women over the age of 40 have dense breasts and some women in the 70s and 80s do as well. A dense breast is inherited. Yes, they are. They do tend to run in families. If your mum had dense breasts, you probably will as well. But being under or overweight, losing or gaining weight, pregnancy, breastfeeding, HRT and alcohol can affect your breast density. More on that later. So how do you know if your breasts are dense? Well, your doctor finds out when you have a mammogram. The glandular and connective tissues look white while the fatty tissue looks black. Therefore, the whiter your breast looks on a mammogram, the more dense your breasts are. How do we score breast density? Well, we use the BIRADS system, which splits breasts up into one of four categories, depending on how their breasts look like on a mammogram. This has nothing to do with the colour of your skin. It's just how black or white they are when we look at them on the screen. The first category is A, like this Americano. These are mainly fatty breasts. They look black on a mammogram. That's 10% of women. The second category is B, like this mocha. Your breasts have a little bit more glandular tissue and that's about 40% of women. The third category is C, like this latte here. There's a lot more glandular tissue than fatty tissue, so they look more white and this is about 40% of women. And the final category is D. This is just pure milk. The breasts look very, very white. They're extremely dense and that's about 10% of all women. And if you score C or D, you officially have dense breasts. Now in Europe, it should be part of your mammogram report after breast screening. In the UK, it's not yet mandatory to put it in. And in America from September 24, every mammogram report is required to include your breast density. But there's a lot of campaigning going on to make sure that every woman knows what her breast density is. And you do have a right to know. And that's because having dense breasts can increase your risk of getting breast cancer in the future. The problem is that we don't yet know what to do with that information, how to advise someone like you with dense breasts. Let me explain. Dense breasts increases your risks of getting breast cancer. Firstly, there are lots of studies that show that over 10 years, women with dense breasts are four to six times more likely to get breast cancer than someone with fatty breasts. The frustrating thing is that we don't know why this happens. So what is the actual increase in breast cancer risk for a woman with dense breasts? We know that dense breasts increases your risk of breast cancer, but what does that actually mean to you? Compared to a woman with B-grade breasts, if you have C-grade dense breasts, your risk is one and a half times higher. And if you have D-grade breasts, your risk is double. And that sounds really scary, right? But it's not. 
If you're 40 and you've got dense breasts, you might now think that you have a one in two chance of getting breast cancer. Take these 1,000 yellow pom-poms. You might now think that half of all women in their 40s with dense breasts will get breast cancer. That's 500. But it's not true because the biggest reason you get breast cancer is your age. So when you're 40, one in 64 women or one and a half percent will get breast cancer. That's this number. And if your breasts are very dense, group category D, that risk doubles. So we've now got 3% of women in their 40s getting breast cancer with dense breasts, not 50%. Dense breasts means it's harder to see a cancer on a mammogram. So the whole point of the screening program is to find very small cancers and precancers called DCIS before you can feel them as a lump. So let's go back to the mammogram pictures again. Breast cancers are white on a black background, but dense breasts look white as well. And that's why it's harder to pick up small cancers in dense breasts. Now the latest research says that mammograms will miss about 40% of cancers in women with extremely dense breasts. Another very scary headline, right? And that's the problem when you hear a sentence like that. What does it actually mean for you? At first glance, you might think that if a thousand women with very dense breasts had a mammogram, then 400 cancers would be missed, which is terrifying. But that assumes that every woman with very dense breasts has breast cancer, and they don't. Remember again that your risk of getting breast cancer increases by age. Now I've rounded the numbers up or down here to make the maths easier to understand, and I'll take it really slowly, because I get confused as well. Let's go back to a 40-year-old woman. If you're 40, you have a 1 in 60 chance of getting breast cancer, or 1.5%. If your breasts are very dense, that's the D category, that risk doubles. So now we've got 2 in 60 women having breast cancer, or 3%. So let's go back to our 1,000 women. If I've got 1,000 40-year-olds with very dense breasts, 3% of them will have breast cancer at any one time. That's 33 women. Now I said that mammograms miss 40% of cancers in, breast, in women with dense breasts. And that means that 13 of those will be missed on a mammogram and not the 400 as we originally thought. Now one of the reasons we don't routinely offer mammograms to young women under the age of 40 is that they are less accurate because young women have dense breasts and mammograms are more likely to miss a small cancer. It also means that women with dense breasts are more likely to be called back for further testing. And that's why there are lots of trials going on at the moment to try and work out how we can screen women like you with dense breasts for breast cancer. We want to know, is there anything more accurate like an MRI or an ultrasound? And does more regular screening or MRI scanning have an impact on breast cancer outcome and survival for the women who do get breast cancer? Now you might be panicking after hearing all of this, Let's say you've got dense breasts, what does it actually mean for you? Well, firstly, it's really important that you check your breasts regularly and you can learn how to do that in this video. Secondly, we still don't know what triggers a healthy breast cell to turn into a cancer. And there are lots of things that increase and decrease the risk of that happening apart from breast density. There's also no clear evidence that reducing your breast density will reduce your risk of breast cancer in the future. So can anything increase your breast density? Is there anything you need to avoid? Well, there are two things we do know about. That's alcohol and combined HRT. Let's start with alcohol. When you drink alcohol, it increases the amount of estrogen in your blood. Now, estrogen can encourage healthy breast growth, just like when you're pregnant and your breasts start to grow. And that means that your breasts can become more dense as they have more glandular tissue. Alcohol also separately increases your risk of getting breast cancer, and I talk about that in this video. There's not a lot of research in this area, but the small number of studies have shown that the more you drink, the denser your breasts. But as before, it's only a small increase in your breast density of about 10 to 15%. So drinking more than seven units a week can make your breasts 10% more dense. That doesn't mean you automatically have a one in 10 chance of getting breast cancer. You could have B breasts and drink a lot and still have B breasts, so your breast density actually hasn't increased. It doesn't mean you're automatically in that very dense group. But if you are worried, you could think about cutting down on the amount of alcohol you drink. What about combined HRT? 
Well, a review of 22 studies found that taking combined HRT, that's HRT with both estrogen and progesterone, can increase your breast density by 15 to 70 percent, much higher than the effect of alcohol. But that's a big variation in the increase of breast density, and it doesn't happen to every woman. For some women, the increase in breast density can mean a 10 to 20 percent increase in breast cancer risk, which is still a very small increase. It doesn't mean you have a one in five chance of getting breast cancer if you take HRT. Let's take a thousand women in their 50s who aren't on HRT. At any one time, 24 of them will have breast cancer. And if these women start to take systemic combined HRT, because of the increase in breast density, it increases the number of women with breast cancer by 20%. And that means an extra five in a thousand women will get breast cancer because of the increase in breast density from systemic HRT. When you stop combined HRT, it can take over five years for your breast density and your risk of breast cancer to return to normal. Some studies showed that just one year of systemic combined HRT can double your breast density and quadruple the chance of you having an abnormal mammogram at breast screening. But remember, it is only a small increase, but if it's something you're worried about, you could talk to your doctor about reducing the dose. So if you have dense breasts, do you still need a mammogram? This is tricky. I've told you that mammograms can miss some cancers in women with dense breasts. Do you still need to have your screening mammograms? The answer is yes. Most breast cancers will still be seen on a mammogram, so it's important to go for your regular screening scans. Mammograms do save lives. And remember that your breasts get less dense as you get older and you go through the screening program. But if you have a symptom of breast cancer, like a lump, a dimple in the skin, or an inverted nipple, your doctor might arrange an extra scan, like an ultrasound or an MRI, if the mammogram is normal. Do you need extra screening if you have dense breasts? In an ideal world, everyone with dense breasts would get special screening. The problem is that we don't have the evidence to prove whether that extra screening with either ultrasound or MRIs saves lives. The mammogram screening program exists because we know that screening women stops them dying from breast cancer. To set up a new global program, we have to know that the extra time, money and effort needed to run it does actually make a difference to breast cancer outcomes. There are lots of trials going on at the moment trying to find the answer. But we also have to remember this fact. In the UK, almost half all women aged 50 to 53 aren't going for their first screening mammogram. And over a third of women aren't going back for their second or third screen. Now we know there are issues with fitting it in around your working day and far too many influencers scaremongering online saying mammograms are dangerous. Please don't believe them, they're not. And you do need to make up your own opinion based on the sensible facts. And I've got a video all about mammograms coming shortly. But if women aren't going for a mammogram, how many are actually going to turn up for an ultrasound or an MRI, which both take longer to do, can involve contrast in your arm and lying in a claustrophobic tunnel? We really need to think carefully before we start offering out scanning to every woman because they might not all take it up. Now, we do hope that the current trials will give us more information in the not too distant future. And I'm on the screening panel of one of them as a patient advocate trying to work out what is the best for us. Some European countries are currently offering extra ultrasound scanning to women with category D breasts after their screening mammogram. The DENSE trial, and that's dense tissue and early breast neoplasm screening, recommended that women with extremely dense breasts, and that's category D, should have extra breast screening, ideally with an MRI, but an ultrasound could be used if MRI wasn't available. It's going to take time and money for these changes to be implemented properly. Meanwhile, check your breasts regularly, eat a healthy plant-based diet, make exercise a daily habit, and they will all reduce your risk of getting breast cancer in the future. I'm Dr. Liz Reardon. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss my next video, and thanks for watching.